Well, here you have the on the left and the top the characteristic lines around the flag queen as you can compute them with a computer. Uh, this is classical. And where this uh, line accumulate, the, there are the birthplace of shock waves. So if we want to prevent shock wave formation, we have to maintain the parallelism of the characteristic lines, of the Mach lines. And this can be done with three pairs of electrodes because as you can see, we have to accelerate the fluid at the leading edge, but we have to slow down the fluid uh, in the middle of the profile and then accelerate again. So the schema of the forces is given on the left and right, as you can see. Well, if you think about hydraulic analogy, the pressure is equivalent to the level of the water. And if you want to prevent the birth of waves, you have to keep the water flat. <laughs> That's very simple. So a basic idea arose. The gas fluid mechanics could be split into two, three domains. Supersonic flow with a subsonic flow without shock wave. Supersonic flows with shock waves. And then the third one, supersonic flow, MHD controlled, without shock waves and without turbulence. In the mid of the IT, we tried to set up a research program towards shock wave cancellation by Lawrence Force Field. The idea was to find an old shock driven wind tunnel and to operate into a hot supersonic argon with high electrical conductivity and sufficient interaction parameter value. We found the shock-driven wind tunnel in Caen, France. We found high-capacity capacitors, ignitron, everything. A student, Bertrand Lebrun, achieved a PhD thesis, computing all the required parameters to run the experiment. Well, this is a quite original way how Lebrun did this calculation. For in those times, the computer were very slow. I think about a normal computer. You used Macintosh units with a uh, 2 megahertz clock and uh, 500k for central memory. So it was absolutely impossible to run two-day simulation with such machine. So uh, Lebrun used six machines. And uh, uh, we were one of the first to operate a multiprocessor technique because we had six multiprocessor techniques, but the connection was uh, ob obtained with a motorcycle that you can see there. Well, this is the result of this 2D computation. Uh, and now you can do that very easily with modern computers, uh, e even with one uh, microprocessor, because they are so much faster. And here you can see how Lebrun obtained a different pattern from uh, Mac lines, which tended to think that shockwave could be uh, cancelled. This was presented in uh, two MHD meetings, Tsukubai, Japan, 1987 and Beijing 1988 and it was published in peer-reviewed journal. Well, of course we had no money to go to Tsukuba and to China, so the paper was just <laughs> included in the proceeding in the peer-reviewed journal, it was easier. This new technique suggested that supersonic and even hypersonic flight in dense air could be possible without any noise. Well, due to evident connection with UFO case, the French official, scared, preferred to give up. Funding was refused. The scholarship of Lebrun 
extended over two years, was used up after the publication of papers in top-level peer-reviewed journal and acceptation of communication by international meeting boards, to which we could not attend due to complete lack of money, Leblanc abandoned research, created a company devoted to combustion simulation in motors. I went back to pure theoretical research, kinetic theory, of two temperature plasma, astrophysics, mathematical physics, cosmology. Except my salary in the French CNRS, I was deprived on any of any funding during 25 years until retirement. Everything was gone with the wind. Everything was gone with the wind. Anyway, the French CNES. Centre National d'Etudes Spatiales, a national center, French national center devoted to spatial studies, had created a service called the GEPAN. GEPAN was a group d'études des phénomènes aériens identifiés. It was a group devoted to the study of UFOs. It was created in 1977, and they tried to run some experiments by a horn in a military laboratory located in Toulouse, France. Here you have two pictures of this uh, installation. It's a subsonic wind tunnel on the left. On the right, you can see in four the cross section of the tunnel. And they put the cylinder accelerator in this channel and try to see if it was possible to cancel the turbulent wake. It was an idea that I suggested in a letter in uh, how to evidence the reduction of the turbulent wake uh, in the air. Uh, just put a microphone on the wall, and if the level of the noise was reduced and even suppressed, it would mean that this turbulence would be reduced or cancelled. On the right, you see in two, the two big coins producing, I think, a, a 4,000 gauss uh, field. And it was necessary to create the ionization in the channel. In my letter, I suggest to use 2,750 megahertz source for ionization creation, which is a standard. So they built two megawatt source and tried to ionize the gas. The way they did is shown on the left down. You can see the microwave wide, the window made of Teflon, but they ignored that everybody knows that if uh, the hair is ionized, the electromagnetic waves cannot cross it. That's for you cannot communicate with an astronaut when he's uh, uh, doing his re-entry process in the atmosphere. So they had ionized layer and nothing else. And the ionization could not be uh, installed around the cylinder. So they gave up and uh, unfortunately, we are not asked to participate because if I, I had been asked to participate, I, I would have given the solution immediately. The solution was to inject the microwave by the model as shown on this slide. And then inside the cylinder, you put some material that scatters the uh, waves all around and then the ionization is installed very close to the model, exactly in the place you would like to see this ionization to be installed. Well, in those mid-80 years, it was the end of the French MSD. 20 years later, three guys, Jean-Christophe Doré, Mathieu Adair, Xavier Lafont, asked me to run MHD experiments. I was uh, retired, but I, I accepted. 
uh, Jean-Christophe Dury offered 15 square meters home garage facility. So we have a place to install some experiments. And well, we needed money. So we tried to get some. And uh, I wrote a book. And uh, we printed the, the book. And uh, Dury, Adair, and Lafon sold the book. And it brought uh, 50,000 euros. So we had money to install experiments. Uh, in addition, we had uh, the help of two engineers, Jack Le Galant and Jack Jean. They were retired, but they uh, offered to help us without being paid. So we had a good uh, research team. We had money and a very, very small place. <laughs> well, uh, you can see the results on this page. Here I mentioned the first paper of 1983 in Moscow. Uh, I mentioned the thesis of the PhD thesis of Lebrun, some publication in peer-reviewed journals, so this is a proof of what I said before. And uh, then we had the first meeting in uh, Lithuania, in Vilnius, for MHD, that was presented in 2008. And then published in a uh, peer reviewed journal, Acta Physica Polonica. We had another paper presented in uh, Germany, in Bremer, a meeting devoted to hypersonic processes. And then another one in the international MSD meeting uh, of Jeju in 2010 in Korea. I will insist about this work because uh, we have pictures that are quite impressive. Well, we operated a wall confinement technique by magnetic gradient inversion. It was presented by me and Jean-Christophe Doré. Jean-Christophe Doré built an apparatus with a transparent glass chamber. Experiment in low pressure gas makes possible to get high hold parameter with simple solid magnets and glow discharges with moderate voltage. It also reproduced somewhat in high altitude for hypersonic fly problems. The electrical connectivity becomes the following matrix, where beta is a old parameter. Here you have this matrix. In black, the scalar conductivity. In red, electrical conductivity. When, well, the old parameter is low, the conductivity is close to the scalar conductivity. But at the opposite, when we are in high hole parameter, old parameter regime, then the conductivity is matrix, but as we can see, its four components are very reduced. Uh, the parallel components is reduced by the square of the old parameter and the transverse component by the inverse of the old parameter. So you have a tool to create a non-homogeneous electrical conductivity design. So here, this is uh, the plant built by Doré. Uh, here you can see a cylinder, large size, in which we can uh, create with a pump. This is a vacuum bell. This is a pump. And here is a small model, six or seven centimeters large. And here is the electrical supply. Well, uh, as we use high uh, voltage, uh, it is not uh, convenient to move the things with the hand. So uh, Dory installed an electric actuator in order to move the, the, the magnet represented in red. Well, this is another view of the installation with the actuator, the confident magnet, the disc-shaped model, the below the sea, the the pump, the electric device. Next slide, an axisymmetric axi model of a di MHD disc-shaped aerodyne 
put on a cylindrical solid magnet. We use solid magnet because if we would like to produce a field with a coil, the intensity would be too large. So it was easier to do that. Uh, on the top of the model, you have a belt of segmented electrode. And in red, you see the line for magnetic field. You see that this line expand. So if we want to make the current flow from uh, A to B, the magnetic pressure will tend to push the discharge away. And that's exactly that you can see on this picture, because here you have the electrodes, segmental electrode in B in, in, at the top, and a continuous electrode in A. And here you can see the characteristic pattern of the discharge. So we wanted to keep this discharge close to the wall. So the idea was to modify the geometry. Here this is more precise. You can see the close discharge, the ele segmented electrode and the magnet. In an MHD aerodyne, the magnetic field would be created by a coil, not by a solid magnet. In the precedent images, this B field would be created by an equatorial one. In order to keep the discharge close to the wall, we had a second coil with opposite electric current. This modifies the magnetic geometry so that the magnetic field is maximum at some distance from the wall. Then the magnetic pressure will press the discharge close to the wall. In other terms, back to the matrix form of the electrical conductivity, the discharge will follow the minimum resistance path. The second core effect is simulated by a second solid core with opposite polarity. Here you can see the magnetic, the in intensity of magnetic field. The strongest is given by the color yellow. And here in white, we have represented what behaves like a magnetic barrier. So this is the expected magnetic wall confinement expect. Here we have computed the value of the magnetic field and the value of the magnetic pressure. Left, you have the value of the magnetic field. As you can see, it's maximum in B, and it's correspond to this part of design. And here is the value of the magnetic pressure. Here, when the confinement magnet comes down, the discharge is progressively pulled to the wall. Here we have represented the two magnets. Up the, the top magnet descent starts the confining process. Now the glow discharge is fully confined to the wall. And here we have represented the position of the magnets. Of course, in a real MHD aerodyne, this magnet will be replaced by coils. This is another view where you see the actuators, the confinement magnet, the segmented electrodes.